Thanks, uh, thanks, Shobha. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we know we are running uh, behind time, so we'll uh, really keep it as fiery as possible. As the title says, it's fireside. Uh, Arjun, uh, thank you for you know your context setting and you know uh, talking really about uh, how communication is playing a role in uh, really creating or you know really uh, basically uh, helping this category grow, right? So I remember when I was studying and there was hardly any communication that was done, you know, through ads or on the press uh, by any institution as such. But today, you know, you see a lot of communication happening around ad tech, right? And this is exactly happening since ad tech has come into the picture. How do you as a business owner and as a, from the CEO's lens, see communication, right? Uh, taking the message of ad tech to the world and you know uh, basically communicating uh, why ad tech today is necessary. So first two things here. Number one, uh, what you said right, lot of times people have spoken about this as a very negative thing. You are merchandising education, you are trying to sell it, how is it possible? Education cannot be sold. Uh, my answer to it is, See, the outcome of all this, all this messaging, all this communication, all these ads which EdTech and by now extension education institution has done is that we have been at least able to excite lot more students to pick up education and be serious about it. I mean, when I was, I mean, I've been in, in EdTech for quite some time now and I have met tons and tons of students, thousands of students who would not have thought about doing an upskilling course or taking a test prep product without seeing an ad of it. So I see what we are doing today as a great service to the student ecosystem where we are actually motivating them to do something useful than spend their time on OTT. So I see it as a very important and useful thing and I think that uh, that's one uh, revolution edtex have been able to create. Today, every educational institution knows that this is something which you can grow and propagate and from a very business point of view, a market which you can grow. And hence, communicating all the great things they are doing is important. So the work EdTech had done has not only grown education as a segment in the country, but has also forced the brick and mortar people, the larger education players to go out and talk about what they are doing. I mean, I'm sure that you can see today how much of communication comes out in the form of PR, in the form of press release, in the form of, uh, in the form of advertisements from even premier institutes like IITs and IIMs. Recently, almost uh, two years ago, IIT Madras launched a BSc program in computer science online and they tweeted about it saying that admissions are open. That tweet got them 10,000 applications. Every top institute today is on social media. Where do you think all this change comes from? And that's important. Why should, it, why should these institutions be known only to few people who have exposure? It should be known to everyone in this country. And I think communication has made that change. So that I think has been uh, an outcome of whatever we are doing. I really hope you, know, uh, you, you people were there when I was studying because you guys really uh, make learning cool. So thank you for that. Uh, you know, moving on, uh, if we if we look at your sector, right? So it's it's majorly divided into two parts, like the K-12 education and the higher education, right? When it comes to K-12, right? And pardon me for saying this, but there is a real you know a real negative word out there about K-12, right? Uh, I mean, you know, you know uh, who I'm speaking about and what what are the instances I'm speaking about. But how do you see communication as a tool to to be used by you know business owners in the ad tech industry? Uh, to actually, uh, you know, uh, turn this positive, uh, turn this into a positive sentiment for for the K-12 segment. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, we were talking about it uh, earlier also. Uh, yes, there has been some bit of uh, problems going on in K-12, especially. Uh, but then, in my view, however, how so it has been getting reflected outside, or whatever you are seeing in newspaper today, is blown out of proportion with respect to what is really happening. So I see whatever we are hearing today more as a communication failure than anything else. It's just that 
everyone seems to be uh, caught in the storm and its negative news one after another continuously. So, uh, in my view, this is more about how the leadership is able to ensure that the communication goes out very, very clearly. Yes, there are problems, but which industry doesn't go through cycles? If the way you, I mean, if you have planned for it earlier itself, and if you ensure that the right communication goes out about all these things, then it's fine. It never happens. Yes, there has been mistakes. Mistakes happened. And you, you always had an opportunity to fix it. You didn't fix it. So now it is blown out of proportion. In my view, it is more about a communication failure and how you have been managing things. I don't want to take any names today, but uh, the, the layoffs which happened from certain institutions would not have become a viral news if the institution was not sp spending on IPL at the same time. This tone deaf way of doing things is not he helping anyone. And that's why I, I call it more as a communication failure than anything else today. Right. So, you know, uh, interestingly, you, and we'll come to higher education in the uh, second part of the uh, conversation. But one point that I really wanted to, uh, you know, bring out here is that, you know, we mentioned about uh, how edtech is really leading the category, right, and creating the category for a lot of traditional uh, institutions, you know, to go the communication way in the in form of ads and, 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 and press, right. Uh, so, you know, as a business owner and uh, as a business leader, uh, we have a room filled of you know communicators here right as a ceo where does the discussion about pr and discussion about communication really start uh, when you are discussing about your strategies so i mean this may be a little controversial uh, i see pr as zero cost marketing that's how i have always seen it uh, uh, and i think that is the most effective and the best way to communicate but from a pr perspective you'll only get picked up if your communication has got some weight to it. So the way we see it is you keep doing good and you keep speaking about it. You have to speak about it. And that's when people will see you and start appreciating what you are. So at least with us, PR is a very inherent part of the strategy. We believe in PR. We think that whatever good we are doing should be known to, known to the outside world whatever uh, we whatever our thought processes behind the decision should be known to the stakeholders of our business which could be our students our learners the the media community so on and so forth so for us at least uh, and our partner ad factor who is <laughs> by 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 chance the uh, sponsor of this we are very clear that this is a very very strategic part of our communication and I personally believe that if you get PR right, a lot of things can be done right. I mean, there has been a lot of startups which came into forefront just because they got their PR right. Right. So, you know, uh, you mentioned about students, you know, the word came up, uh, you know, uh, quite a lot of time in your speech and, you know, in our conversation as well. Uh, so, when we look at, uh, you know, students from the higher education category, right, uh, how do you see communication influencing them? So, one part is obviously, you know, the business influencers, right? The other part is actually, you know, going into the consumer's mind and saying that, you know, when you think about higher education, you should think about it. Yeah. It's very important, especially in the higher education category. Because, you know, uh, for our learner or our students, right, um, I am basically trying to talk to a working professional who is well set in their career, making money, uh, don't have much problems in life. And I'm telling him that, hey, go out and upskill now. For him, what I sell is priority number five. So I need to communicate to him saying that this is priority number five today. But if you don't do it, this is going to screw your speed of growth. So for me, it's very, very important. Uh, for me, at least, uh, the way I look at it is uh, uh, my product gets important for my consumer, working professional. Typically, when they have a, uh, have a problem in their life, now that problem could be the promotion they were expecting, the increment which never happened, or even maybe the girl who said no to him because he did not have a great profile. That's when they start thinking, okay, I need to do something because what I'm doing is not great. And at that point, he or she needs to think about upgrade. 
right? So that's been the essence of all communication. Be there, keep talking about it, and wait for the right opportunity. So a recent communication campaign which we, which we ran in April was about the appraisals. April is the time most people get appraisal, and everyone is unhappy with appraisal. That's what happens. <laughs> okay, people who did not get a good appraisal are unhappy, obviously. People who got a good appraisal thinks that they should get better. So when you communicate at that time, saying that, don't worry, there's no point in worrying about it. If you need better, what you need to do is you need to first of all make yourself upskilled. So go out and do it. So these are the points where I need to go and prick the customer, prick the learner at the right spot and communicate in the right manner. So that's what we do. Great. Uh, we we'll, we are just uh, you know uh, being on time, and I'll I'll just open it up for questions now. Uh, before that, you know, uh, Arjun, one thing that came to my mind, you know, during our conversation, uh, we have been hearing a lot about post-pandemic, you know, and after the pandemic, uh, you know, uh, brands are really looking at PR and corporate communication is a new way, right? Uh, is this the same with Upgrade? Like, are you looking at corporate communication and PR more importantly now after the pandemic effects, or has it been all throughout the same? It's been all throughout. Uh, I wouldn't say more important. This is one of the most important thing, as I told you. Okay, after the user experience and the outcome, I would say PR and communication is one of the most important thing we look at. And uh, I don't want to use the post-pandemic, pre-pandemic thing, right? Because in my view. In that two years of pandemic, at least my consumer went through three different pivots. In the first six months, they were all concerned about losing their job. After that, they got used. They got, they got used to it, they became comfortable. One year later, they were getting more opportunities than they could ever get. And end of last year, it was madness. Nobody really wanted to do anything. Everyone knew that they'll get 100% hike without any problems. So. In my view, there is no pre-pandemic and post-pandemic. It's been always about looking closely what your consumer is thinking, what are the problems he or she is facing, and then communicating accordingly. And my communication changed as and when the mood of my customer changed. And with that, of course, PR and corporate communication also, because internal communication also is so important. Correct. And when you say post-pandemic, I really hope that we are really past the pandemic now. Yeah. Uh, it has been two long years and two bad years for us, and we really hope that we are, uh, you know, uh, over the on the other side of the bump. On that note, I'm opening up uh, this uh, panel uh, for questions from the audience, if any. We have uh, the lady in the right. We're coming to you, ma'am. Yeah. Hi Arjun, hi Satyajit, thank you so much for this uh, fireside chat. My name is Vinti, I'm from Speechify. We convert text to speech and our mission is basically to make information more accessible for everyone around the world. Um, so my question to uh, Arjun is that um, you're in an industry and Upgrad has already done so much innovation uh, you know, to make the life of students easier. So what are some of the other trends that are coming forward in terms of innovation and growth of the edtech industry? So yeah, so uh, our approach always has been to uh, recreate a high quality university system online. Okay, we keep telling our students that our aspiration is to put a university in a mobile phone. So that when you're traveling back from your office uh, to home, you can take your lessons during the travel time and in two years, you have a master's degree. So that's the aspiration. What I always see is that the consumer changes. The expectation of the consumer continuously changes. And with that expectation, the tools required to do the same. So today, um, recently, especially after the pandemic is over, I'm, I, I assume that the pandemic is over, post-pandemic, it has been a lot about hybrid. So they keep asking questions on how they can come in and do some offline sessions and meet their, uh, meet their uh, I mean, people who are in their uh, uh, batch. The problem is that when we organize these things, right, nobody turns up, right? Because then the problem, okay, I need to take a, uh, I need to uh, travel there, I need to sit there, so on and so forth comes in. So what we did was, we asked them, what are you looking at doing? What do you want to do? They said that, so you know, a large part of this curriculum, this education was also about networking. I don't think I've been able to network because I did online. 
So how do I create a networking kind of an ecosystem online which will give me the same impact of it? So that's been, I mean, I'm just talking about the latest innovation. So what we did was we used the concept of uh, breakout rooms which you have in and created a network uh, networking mechanism on our portal. So these kind of things keeps happening and it's all about what is the customer requirement and of course what is the regulator university requirement that's also a very important pass, part on it but yeah now that you told me that you work on text to speech right so that's also one thing these days nobody likes to read okay it's more and more about videos and listening and other things so there are some bit of work happening on that direction also but more than the audio part people are still keen on video can i learn a concept really quick yeah we have time for one more question so uh, the lady in the center who ha who raised her hand in the beginning uh there actually Uh, hello guys, thank you so much for all the input. Uh, Arjun, this question is uh, about the industry. See, EdTech has had a lot of negative news coming in. Even though your organization might not be a part of it, it impacts the entire industry perception. How do you deal with uh, such a situation? What would you suggest to other EdTechs? Uh, see, it's one company or two companies because of which the entire industry has to suffer so what what is your take on that and what are you guys doing about it and what would you suggest to other people in the same environment so thank you for that question uh, first of all i don't want to give any advice to anyone that's that that is not something i want to get into but you are absolutely right uh, uh, when continuously uh, such news starts coming it kind of impacts the entire industry more than the industry, what it happens is it starts impacting a breed of entrepreneurs who may be thinking about starting off. It impacts a lot of people who are looking as, uh, I mean, who are look, planning to join startups as their next job. And these news clearly dissuades them. So in my view, these things, and, and I really don't think that the investors should have gone out doing such PR because that is where all this came from because some of the founders picked up those few slides and started talking about the same thing. So that's where all this came from. So, and that obviously is, uh, has been uh, impacting a lot of things. People now say that, why am I doing startup? This is not a constant thing. What we have been doing at least that we have been clearly saying that this is not what it is. We have been trying to do positive PR. We have been trying to make our stance also clear. We have been talking about all the positive things we are doing. We are talking about the hiring we are doing, going to do. We are talking about how our business is growing. We are talking about how our PNL is only getting stronger. And we have been celebrating our, our, our small victories. So two parts which we have done. One, of course, is trying to go out and use PR for the thing which I told earlier, that is sending out positive news, saying that, okay, this may be happening, but this is not what EdTech in India is. There are so many positive things which are happening here, and these are the things which we are doing. Don't worry about it. That's one. On the inside, uh, on, that's the external part. On the corporate communication part of it, now we have all our employees in office. So we have taken a decision that we are continuously celebrating our small wins. We are continuously communicating to our employees how well they are doing, celebrating the great numbers they are doing, giving out awards, running contests, so on and so forth. So that there's some, some bit of positivity all throughout. That's the least we can do and that's what we are trying to do to insulate ourselves and to change the perception about the industry as a whole. Sure. Thanks, Arjun. Uh, we are really out of time and we need to uh, end the session now. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for your questions. And thank you, Arjun. Thank you so much for joining us today and thank giving you. your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Arjun and Satoshi.